if your turtleneck does not drape you like some sort of mystical wizard, I do not want to wear it. Mm -mm. Look at this. Peekaboo. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today, let's talk some Firebrand. Firebrand has had a history of being one of the more valued elite specs in Guild Wars 2 ever since it was introduced back in Path of Fire. With this being quite the powerful elite spec, one may expect larger changes to have been implemented on the elite specialization, but shockingly there haven't been many sweeping changes to the way Firebrands fundamentally play. Being a Guardian main, and of course the Firebrand main, I believe that it's time to do some sort of Firebrand redesign to give it more spice and to give it a little bit of extra love in the way that it plays, but also to keep it in more healthy terms with the rest of the Elite Specs and the rest of the game. Of course, the other profession that pairs in this discussion would be Scourge, but maybe I'll leave Scourge for another video. My real point of contention lies in the tomes, so most of this video will be discussing changes to tomes. So tomes! Tomes are an awesome and iconic ability type to Firebrand, but as they're currently implemented, they're both bland in skill diversity and are often overpowered and difficult to balance, as all three tomes are available at any given time. Tomes, as virtues, also provide no inherent trade-off to the class or altering the class identity, as they're all three accessible at any given time, much like Core Guardian or Dragon Hunter. With all of these reasonings combined, I've long since believed that tomes specifically are in dire need of a complete overhaul in the way that they are functioning in Guild Wars 2 currently. So here are my general design changes to Firebrand tomes. First, let's talk about some problems. First problem, all tomes being accessible. In the world of elite specializations, elite specs fare much better when the player must make pointed decisions to specialize their style of play in a particular direction. Rather than having all of the tools available to them at any given time and every beat of combat. For the Firebrand, I'd be highly interested to see a bold change that made it to where only one tome was accessible while in combat by limiting the player to only one book available to them. Before entering combat, maybe the Firebrand would have to slot in which tome they'd want to bring into the fight. The second problem I have, and is often with Guardian and Firebrand, is that tomes are too powerful. It is often felt that the reasons the tomes are difficult to balance is due to all three being available at any given time. When playing a Firebrand, you kind of have access to five weapons. For the most part, you have your two weapon kits, and then you have the F1, F2, and F3 available. With a change in direction that forces players to take only one tome, it would reduce the overpowered aspects of the tome system inherently, while also allowing each tome to receive more proper balancing and also be changed to have interesting and unique functions of spells within that tome itself. And my third problem is the repetitive skill design that tomes have. In part, this problem's actually a benefit to newer players picking up the elite spec. Each ability inside the tomes follow a pattern of a cone attack, an AoE around the player, a placed AoE, a larger AoE around the player, and an even larger AoE around the player that has a unique buff. While to new players this may seem much easier to fall into, to me I find it to be rather boring and predictable. If we lived in a world where they had one tome available in combat, then the abilities could have slightly more variety of what each ability does and how it's executed, as you would no longer need to juggle 15 skills for the profession mechanic. We're going into the detailed list of the changes to Firebrand tomes. First and foremost, let's talk about the general overview of how the tome system I think would work well. First, the Firebrand will now have to select their tome of choice before combat starts. This means that you have like a pop-up window of like the one F skill, either slot F1, F2, or F3 to take into combat. Secondly, tomes would now all be on a 12 second cooldown. Tomes would no longer use pages as an ammunition system to use their abilities. They would just act as a normal kit or even like a quote unquote third weapon that you bring. Pages are now instead used to enhance the epilogue abilities, the fifth ability that is the unique buff for each tome. 
pages would now be filled while holding your tome. And then as the final note with this page system that I would like to see, I would have it to where the tome pages don't degenerate when out of combat. So you end combat, if you're at like 15 energy or 15 words written down, you have that one page and half of the other page filled, it won't read, it won't degenerate if you are out of combat because realistically waiting in a tome for 50 seconds to get five pages would be a, a large commitment. Let's get into the actual more detailed portion of this video where I'm going to be talking about the tome skills in specific and my fan redesign of every single ability that is basically available to the Firebrand. So let's begin with the tomes, Tome of Justice, Tome of Resolve, and Tome of Courage. All the passive effects would be the same. However, I would increase the cast time to activate these tomes up to half a second and all of them being on a 12 second cooldown, uh, which is a little bit more than a normal weapon swap. So it's still something you kind of have to commit to. I could even see something like a 15 minute uh, or a 15 second cooldown. Let's get into the more detailed aspect of each tome in particular. Of course, starting with the F1, the Tome of Justice. I have it to where the auto attack is actually a chain, where you have Searing Spell, Scorching Spell, and then Seething Spell. It would be a single target auto attack chain that you do damage and fire, damage and fire, but the final strike being a larger, almost fireball-esque situation where you explode fire on your target, deal damage, and you burn enemies around them. This would be uh, able to hit three targets. Your next ability would be changed to Path of Flame. I always wanted to name it Path of Fire, just to be very on brand, but we'll keep the expansion title sacred, but I'm definitely pulling reference from that. The second ability that I made was Path of Flame. This would be your very first introduction to a charge spell. Back in the early demos and alphas of Guild Wars 2, there were actually many charge skills that you would actually have to hold down, and the longer you held them down, you gained more effects. Either you got more projectiles out of it, the projectile was stronger, it traveled a further distance. So I wanted to take that idea and that aspect of combat that was long since lost to the demos and alphas and try to reintroduce it with this concept video. So Path of Flame, charge up a spell of the Great Conflagration of Balthazar, deal more damage and burning with each interval of charge. So first charge you do minor damage and one second of burning. Second charge, you do more damage, two stacks of burning. Third charge, more damage, three stacks of burning. Similar, similar, 900 range, um, maximum charge time of two seconds to, to hold it down. And then the third ability, Heated Rebuke, similar to that, I changed it a little bit. A little bit more damage, the pull's the same. However, if you interrupt an enemy, you extend burning condition on them, if they have burning, by two seconds. And then I reduce the number of targets that this affects down to three. I think five targets are sometimes unneeded. It's been so normalized that I want to kind of challenge the, the current status quo of the combat and play around more so with reducing number of targets down from 10 to 5, from 5 to 3, just to see if that can also balance things. Next, Scorched Aftermath. Now I'm totally changing Scorched Aftermath. This used to be the larger AoE of fire around you, but I've put that on the epilogue. I've made all of the epilogues for all three tomes much more interesting and visually impactful. So Scorched Aftermath. I have replaced the icon with the axe one to give a little bit more of a visual idea of what this skill might do. Materialize the suffering and fire and blood during Vabi's occupation. Summon an axe to hone in on your target, which explodes leaving a burning spell fire area. So this would be more of a single target focused ability that will explode and deal damage to enemies around that target hit. This would be kind of your, your sniper nuke with heavier hitting damage, stronger burning and bleed application on a particular target. And then finally, epilogue, Ashes of the Just. I love these very like iconic epilogue skills. They have a unique title of epilogue and currently they give really cool buffs, but I think visually they should be the ones that have like that big area of effect spell effect. Uh, so I have changed this to Epilogue Ashes of the Just, one second cast on a 35 second cooldown. Burn the pages of your book, encircling yourself in a massive sphere of spellfire, which while allies are in the area of spellfire, they gain stacks of Ashes of the Just. Each page burned increases the duration of this spell. So that's where we're also seeing the incorporation of what the page ammunition system does with this redesign. So this would kind of be the current Scorched Aftermath that we have in-game live that would have that fire field around you. Now my idea is for F2. F2 is your healing. And I think with 
End of Dragons, introduction of single target abilities. And as they continue to improve the single target ally experience, hopefully with better auto target systems and you know just better overall execution of it, I think ally targeting and single target healing spells have a great opportunity to actually balance support and healing in Guild Wars 2. Do not make it super overpowered where you just do a massive conal AoE and you heal people for 2,500, 2, 3,000 healing. With this design, I've incorporated a little bit of that single target ally healing. So changing the F2, first spell is Holy Spell. Tales of guiding spirits aid friends, healing them in front of you and smiting foes. This is your auto attack. It'll be more of a road shaped linear AoE that will do minor damage to two enemies and minorly heal three allies. Once again, healing abilities don't often dip below five targets. So I'm just wondering, what if we had also additional area of effect balancing for healing by dropping the number of targets down to three? But if you use this ability on one single target, the ally targeting, you would channel healing light onto your ally, providing a stronger instant heal at that target to heal them. So the healing on the AoE baseline would be around 400, 450, but a single target you do baseline 900 healing, something a bit stronger, a bit more focused. Skill number two, we have Radiant Recovery, the second charge ability for the tome. So this would charge a spell honoring the rebuilding of Vabi, releasing a cleansing halo in an area which gains stronger healing effects the longer this spell is charged. So healing per condition, normal. If you max charge this, the healing per condition is greatly increased, but each charge you remove uh, one condition, second charge you remove two conditions, third charge you remove uh, three conditions. Next we have Azure or Azure, Azure Sun, Azure Sun. I wanted to keep the identity of this spell because I think it's already pretty good. So Azure Sun, channeled from countless poems, create a burst of light in a location, granting boons to allies while removing their blindness. Additionally, you blind foes. Next, we have a fourth ability that is completely changed and new, Regeneration Him. And this ability only affects ally targets or yourself. It's slightly different, but I think this is something that we could maybe see in the future to play around with it. Their Regeneration Him. Anoint an ally with the hymns of regeneration from past healers. Bless your ally with a healing spell, healing over this hymn's duration. Using multiple hymns on a single target, doubles the healing potency. If you don't have an ally targeted with this ability, you just cast this on yourself as like your own self heal ability. But this ability would heal initially for a, an amount of like 500 or so, but this would be a unique effect separate from regeneration that does healing that wouldn't be able to be removed by conventional methods. So it's a, it's a specific heal over time ability. So regeneration him would last for five seconds and it would deal around 1200 healing. And then finally we have the epilogue for the F2. I think it'd be awesome if that big water field that's on the current fourth ability would be the epilogue actually. So epilogue, eternal oasis, burn the pages of your book, creating a mobile healing field around you, healing allies and converting conditions into boons with each pulse. While in this area, allies gain increased incoming healing. Each page burned increases the duration of this spell. So basically baking the fourth ability into the fifth ability. The duration would be five seconds, but each page burned. Possible increase of one second for a total maximum potential of this ability lasting 10 seconds. With a radius of 360, number of allies five, and it's a water combo field. I also forgot to mention the F1, that uh, epilogue should be like a fire field. Now we're getting into the Tome of Courage. This is where I had a lot more fun, okay? Because the Tome of Courage in particular just feels like a lot of boon generation. And while that's kind of cool, I want this to be like your defensive tome, like where you are the knight, like you are Torai Asa. So I, I definitely pulled from that imagination. Okay, Tome of Courage. Actually gave it an auto attack. This would be Torai Slash, Torai's Return, and then Severance. Torai Slash would just do some damage and apply one second of protection on yourself. Dry's Return would do the same thing, with the final ability, Severance, being slightly more uh, intricate. With the grand power of Tarai, pull the energy from your target and an enemy close to them, dealing damage and inflicting a condition on them. So, PvE. F3, you're that knight, you're Tarai Asa, you're the front line, you want to be that tank. I think this ability 
we could have an auto attack that applies taunt in PvE scenarios. PvP in World versus World, I think just weakness would would suffice. Um, but I'm on the taunt train. I will be championing taunt because it's I think criminal that taunt is not better utilized. <laughs> Nevertheless, let's continue. Daring challenge. This would be the F3 charge ability. So during challenge, as the tails recount to Rai, charge your energy to taunt foes. Gain more benefits the longer you charge this spell. You do decent damage, but the first charge will do one second of taunt on f uh, three targets. The second charge would do two seconds of taunt. The third charge doing three seconds of taunt on three targets around you. The radius would increase with each charge as well. At maximum stacks or at maximum charge, then you would gain that resolution buff. Next for the third ability, we have Valiant Bulwark. We, I have removed a decent amount of the stability application, which F3 is so powerful because it has such consistent stability. So I've baked it a little bit more into Valiant Bulwark to give it something more than just creating a reflect bubble. So Valiant Bulwark, instead of putting this at a location, I would have this to where you envelop yourself in the sun's reflecting light, creating a bubble around you, which reflects projectiles. This would be a moving, mobile, projectile reflection bubble. Additionally, you would grant stability upon casting the spell to yourself and allies inside the bubble. Next for the fourth ability, once again, similar to the F2, a completely new idea for an ability that I think is just like such, such the upfront knightly tank idea that Guild Wars 2, I think, could utilize. So we have Stalwart Stand. Stalwart Stand is that big area ring that provides resistance, I bake that into the epilogue as I have with all other epilogues. Kneel down, creating an area of safety behind you for your allies to shelter in. While you channel this spell, take significantly reduced damage and transfer a portion of the damage your allies would take to yourself. This would be an ability kind of where you are preparing for a massive damage strike from a boss, uh, a fractal, a tank, or even in PvP, if everyone's taking a lot of damage and there's a big like meteor shower going off, you could do stalwart stand, give yourself a little bit of stability, but then you have this road slightly in front of you that trails behind you. You take 70% less damage and then you pull 25% of the damage strikes that your allies are taking to yourself. It's similar to a bulwark gyro that Scrapper has and many other areas of Guild Wars 2's combat. We have systems where you yourself can redirect a portion of your allies' damage onto yourself. And then we have the epilogue, Unbroken Lines. This would basically be your current fourth skill where you have that big light field spell symbol. But basically, burn the pages of your book, creating a spell circle around you, granting allies defensive boons, and enchanting their armor to increase their toughness for a time. Burning more pages prolongs the spell area. This wouldn't be a mobile field like the previous tomes. This would be something you place down. Uh, but essentially, the air, the larger spell area, instead of just granting resistance, this would grant a second of Aegis, protection, stability, and quickness to be like that very highly valued spell that could last for 10 seconds if you have all of your pages up. But then, of course, Unbroken Lines would be a five second buff that refreshes its duration with each pulse, granting allies, 10 allies, uh, plus 300 toughness. The reason why I did 10 allies, because I was thinking of raids, you know, just in case certain bosses do tank based off of toughness. And I actually think that all of them really should for the most part. So that's why I went with the 10 target cap combo field light. All right, everyone, that was the first portion of this video. I actually didn't stop there. That Those were the changes to the tomes that I thought of and I think would be rather interesting if the tomes, instead of all being accessible at once, were instead like a third weapon type or a kit that you slot into organically in combat. And in that event of you only having to take one or you're only allowed to choose one, the abilities would be more interesting, have more variety, and also might feel a little bit more impactful with those epilogue abilities. That's the general giant change for all of the tomes. But I did not stop there. I took it further and I just said, screw it. I'm already a day's work into all the tomes. Let me do the utilities as well and let me look at some traits. So this section of the video will be about utilities and traits. Mantras. 
Mantras a while back were changed to no longer be a spell type that you have to prepare and then use all three charges and then prepare it again. I think that they can still go back to an idea of preparing a spell, but not in a similar way. If you might recall in the tomes, they had charge abilities. I think mantras would be the perfect utility type to incorporate that charge mechanic where you charge a spell to gain use out of it. On top of the charging aspect, I inputted a second ability for the Guardian in particular with all the mantras. So you wouldn't have to prepare the mantra, you would just do the first two abilities. And the third ability of whichever mantra you have is that special ability that mantras used to be. Slightly tweaked here and there. But let's get right into it, because there's, there's many more tooltips to go over. So we have the healing mantra, Mantra of Solace. I would change the very first function of this ability to be a more pure healing ability. This would be a one second charge on a one second cooldown. This mantra could be a channel where you heal yourself and allies. And then the longer you charge this mantra, uh, the more healing you get out of it. And then the final ability, when you get down to the final charge of that mantra, would be Divine Solace. Channel the final mantra of healing for yourself and allies. Charging this mantra for a longer duration strengthens the spell. So now the initial self heal is bolstered to one, uh, 1500 and the charge heal will always be a flat 500. However, if you charge this to your second or your third, you will get Aegis. Charge two is Aegis for two seconds. Charge three is Aegis for 3.5 seconds. Once again, three allies. This ability would be slightly more balanced in the sense that it only affects three allies. You actually have to charge it. And I wouldn't mind seeing this charge be around like 1.5 second charge. Uh, for the mantras, I did lower it down to one second because I was thinking about how mantras currently are and maybe a two second charge would be too long. However, I've since kind of gone back on that, that, that feeling, that notion. So maybe a one and a half second charge for each of these abilities would be acceptable. And next we have Mantra of Truth. Cast the Tenants of Truth to, to debilitate your foes. This would do slightly more damage and this would do cripple and weakness. This would no longer initially blind. It would just rely on that cripple and weakness. Divine Truth. Channel Divine Truth to strike foes and greatly inhibit that. Charging this spell increases its effects. So with the charge aspect of this, you would increase the damage with each charge. 450 to 550 to 720. This would apply immobilize and that blind. So I took the blind from the base mantra, baked it into the final portion. Mantra of flame. This mantra wouldn't actually have a cast time. This mantra would just be insta cast because it kind of already relies a little bit on it being fast. So mantra of flame would be the same. You would do damage and burning, but the final ability would be divine flame. Channel the divine flame of the war god. Call down a line of meteors to deal destructive damage. Channeling this spell improves its strength. Similar to some uh, spell effect animations that I had in mind from Balthazar, and also when you're fighting um, the the dervish in some fractals, when Balthazar calls down those meteors to, to come and strike, it's a really beautiful fire effect. It's a very updated modern fire effect. So I'm, I took inspiration from that. Each increased charge, uh, you would do increased duration of burning, a possible four seconds, five seconds, or six seconds. But then also with each meteor strike, it would convert a boon into a random condition or convert a boon to its proper condition. Next, we have Mantra of Lore. This would be a half second cast time. Uh, channel a Mantra of Cleansing, removing conditions and aiding recovery. This is pretty much the same. Granted, I put cast times on many of the mantras. Three seconds of regen and it would con uh, remove two conditions. The final uh, ability for the mantra of lore would be divine lore. Channel the mantra of divine lore, converting conditions into boons and healing allies. Charging the spell increases its potency. This would be your, like, your go-to stronger area of effect ally heal that also gains the benefits of not only cleansing conditions, but flipping them to boons. So the intervals would be 250 healing, 500 healing, or 720 healing. And then baseline, you would just convert conditions uh, to boon. Next, we have Mantra Potence. Recite a hymn to quicken yourself and allies. This would be a half a second cast. I think the mantra's having a slight cast is also wise to reduce the power creep aspect that mantras currently have. Uh, but quickness would be two seconds. 
but the might would be changed. It'd be five might at a duration of three seconds. And then the final one is Divine Potence. Channel the mantra of Divine Potence, granting empowering boons. Charging the spell increases its benefits. So for this ability, each charge, you have two seconds of quickness, three seconds of quickness, or 4.5 seconds of quickness. And then the might is inherently increased. It's seven stacks of might for three seconds, four seconds or five seconds with a range of 600. And then the final mantra that I had in mind, what if we change mantra of liberation to give it a little bit more something something? So similar to mantra of flame, this wouldn't have a cast time, but it would have a 1.5 second cooldown in between each use. Echo remnants of an ancient uh, pamphlet from Vabi that urged freedom, grants stability and resolution to allies while breaking stuns. This isn't new, it's your stun break, that's another reason you can't really have a, a cast time on the initial uh, things is because it, you'll break your stun, get stability and resolution. For the final spell for the mantra, it would be Divine Liberation. This would be a charge spell. So you have to charge it for 1.5 seconds. I know it says 1.25 1. seconds, but let's up, the let's up the charge duration a little bit. Channel the mantra of Divine Liberation, ensuring allies stay on their feet and bolstering their defenses. So for the final mantra, not only would it apply the stability and resolution and stun break, but each charge you would actually give allies barrier. So first charge is just 300 barrier, barrier. second charge is 500 barrier, and if you get to the final maximum charge, Maybe for the elite, it'd be a two second charge. You give allies a thousand barrier. So all of these uh, final abilities have their own unique cooldown, meaning that they are a stronger portion of that mantra. And let's let's get this out real quick. Let's do the traits. So the traits, because we've changed so much th that has to do with the tomes and also the mantras, let's look at the traits and see if we can give them a fresh coat. So first and foremost, unrelenting criticism. It's a trait discussing something that we didn't even touch. It's about axes. I think the stun on a symbol that is on such a low cooldown is too strong for an adept trait. Axe skills have a chance to inflict bleeding. This would be increased to 35% chance instead of 33% chance. Next, and additionally, Symbol of Vengeance will instead summon swirling axes in its symbol. So you get the symbol, of course, but you get additional axes that spawn within it just to do slightly more damage. And the next we have Archivist of Lore. Because I changed how the pages fundamentally work, this trait wouldn't make any sense, be or it could, but it would just be too long because then you'd have to passively wait 70 seconds to get seven uh, pages. So I wanted this trait to be something more in line with a page generator. So Archivist of Lore, also name change from Archivist of Whisper to Archivist of Lore. This trait would read, Gain words while in combat, even when not wielding a tome. Gain double when striking or healing while in combat. But uh, yeah, Archivist of Lore, I think it's cool. I think it's uh, maybe a bit more interesting for a page generator. Next we have the other traits, Stalwart Speed. I changed this because I think it's too strong. Granting Aegis or stability to allies grants them quickness. However, quickness has a reduced duration on yourself but an increased duration on allies. So it's kind of that selfless buffer where you are applying stronger amounts of quickness to allies, but you yourself might not have quickness on you many times. And this would be all sources of quickness. So if a, a chronomancer applies quickness to you, that is reduced by 15% in its duration. Um, but I think it's smart because there is so much quickness in the game now and Firebrand in specif specifically can apply so much quickness already. Legendary lore. Tome skills gain bonuses from scribing or scribblings uh, in the margins by ancient bards. I have just kind of tweaked these actually. I think I've reduced their duration to make it even more valuable. So F1 is a 15% increased burning duration for all game modes. It's 10 in PVP and World vs. World and 20, I believe, in PVE. Cracking a nice middle ground, a 15% increase because there's only one tome available at any given time might be smart. And then for the F2, every ability that you use on an ally gives them two seconds of regeneration. And for the F3, every ability that affects an ally gives them two seconds of protection. These duration changes are more of a fan idea in a world where boons do not have such long durations across all professions. So now Grandmaster, we have Quick Spell. 
Granted quickness to an ally also grants the epilogue buff of your currently equipped tome. So to make quick spells slightly more differentiated and a bit more unique, this instead would grant the epilogue buff of your currently equipped tome. So if you have the F1 equipped, you'll grant allies Ashes of the Just for five seconds whenever you give them quickness. If you're in Eternal Oasis or if you're in a Toma Resolve, you grant them Eternal Oasis, the F3 equipped, you will grant allies Unbroken Lines. For Eternal Oasis and Unbroken Lines, I drop the duration from 5 seconds to 3 seconds. Only for Lore Master, a subtle change, it's the same, uh, to uh, Tomes retain their Virtue passives while on cooldown, and then Tome skills gain reduced recharge by 25%. Because Tomes would now, in this redesign, be more of a kit, more of a third weapon, their abilities could be kind of camped in. And this trait reduces their recharge by 33%, which might be too much. So I dropped the recharge to a standard 25%. So everyone, that is my entire Firebrand redesign for tomes, for utility skills, and even uh, some extra love for traits. But overall, I think I would love to at least test out what it would be like for a Firebrand to have their tomes be essentially a third kit, a third weapon that you have to specifically decide to take. Similar to like the elite skill tomes that used to be back in vanilla Guild Wars 2, where you could only take Tome of Justice or Tome of Wrath or, or, to or Tome of Courage. So thank you everyone for coming. Comment down below depending on your, your favorite parts, the parts that you absolutely hate. Just tell me I'm trash. Tell me I'm garbage. But I would love to hear your feedback on Firebrand. Do you think Firebrand has reigned supreme for far too long? Do you think that it was a wise decision to give them access to all three tomes ever since the initial beta of Path of Fire? Thank you everyone for coming. If you would like to help support the channel, I have a Patreon and you get early access to videos, exclusive videos, exclusive interviews, and also you can recommend videos for me to make and suggest as well. If you'd like to also pre-order Guild Wars 2 End of Dragons, I have links down below because I am an ArenaNet partner. Thank you so much, ArenaNet. And yeah, comment below what you'd like to see. Should I do something like this for the Scourge? Because I know Scourge is also another elite spec that is just really strong and really powerful. I love doing these large sweeping redesigns. I, I just, it's so much fun for me to do. I get such a kick out of it and talking about balance. So uh, once again, thank you everyone for coming. And uh, I got a Twitch, Twitch down below. You, you can find all the links down below, but I'll see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.